that. And you know what? I didn't take dating very seriously. I dated in med school. I dated people um, in med school. I didn't take it very seriously. In my 30s, um, I still was that way through half of my 30s. But what happened was around the time I started freezing my eggs, I actually, my latter part of my 30s, I actually started panicking about the fact that I wasn't married. And I remember specifically talking to my mom being like, why didn't I take this seriously? Why didn't I make better decisions? And I started thinking back to all the guys I dated being like, oh, should I go back? Maybe he was one. Why did I, you know, and, and I tortured myself crucified myself because I said, how could you not have taken this seriously? What did you do? You let all this time pass and now you're almost 40. And what the, what the flip? How did we get here? Because all of a sudden I was approaching 40 and my parents were like, you need to freeze your eggs. I was like, ah, and I was really hard on myself during that time. I really, really was hard on myself. I was remorseful. I was regretful. I was embarrassed and I felt like I had wasted a lot of time. And then in my 40s, which I am, um, I'm, I'm proud to say that things have gotten a little bit better for me, meaning how, how much or a little rather I beat myself up. The reason why I haven't gotten married is honestly because I haven't found him yet. I, I just, and you know what? It was one day that it literally took me waking up one morning where I had blamed myself and said, well, maybe you are too picky. Well, maybe you are crazy. And maybe you didn't take this seriously. And why didn't you do this? And why weren't you this? And I can't believe you did this. And how'd you let 15 years go by without thinking about this? Fit, feminine, and friendly, and over 40 and single. And some would say, as a result, failing at love. I wanna share something about educated black women. One of the things about educated black women, many of us who have studied at various colleges and universities, colleges train women to think a certain way. And oftentimes we are entrenched in feminist theory, more specifically in black feminist theory, and although feminist theory is interesting, it's intriguing, it, it perhaps it even is empowering. In the real world, in real life, in real time, in our relationships, and oftentimes in relationship with black men, theory does not always equate to practice. Theory does not always play out in the way it does in the history books, in the novels, in the academic books. When you are in relationship with a real black man, most of us statistically want to be with black men. Most of us statistically will be with black men. What we find is that in relationship, Many of these theories don't hold true. Um, as, a, as a student at a university, at a college, you might very easily become more inclined to be independent, to debate, to, um, you know, you have to be assertive. There's a lot of skills that you attain as a college student and as a black woman. And oftentimes these same skills that you attain in the academy work well in the academy, but do not work as well in relationships. There's also something called compartmentalizing, which men do quite naturally and very well. And it is something that women struggle with. Could also be it could also be that women of other races and other cultures are socialized to compartmentalize in a way that black women were not. What does compartmentalizing look like? Well, as an example, is that if you are a boss, if you're a CEO, your director, if you're a corporate executive, if you're a doctor, like Dr. Jen, who you saw a clip of, it means that you know, you have to be able 
to step outside of one, one leadership role and in relationship, be willing to step into a different role. And that role, of course, is should be defined within the confines of your relationship. But you cannot, you cannot intermingle the status and the position that you have at work, the status and the position that maybe you had in, in college, <laughs> You, you know, the way that you were in college, the way that you are at work, if you try to emulate that in your relationship, particularly in relationship with a black man, it will be an epic fail. Many of these theories that we learn in college, many of the ways we are socialized to be in college via women's studies courses and so forth, these theories do not equate to what success looks like in practice. And this is what many educated black women won't talk about, is that all the years spent in college, at university, studying, achieving, helped us to get a certain skill set that is not valued at the same rate in the real world and in real life. I'm not gonna say it holds no value, but oftentimes the value that it holds in a relationship is minimal. It's minimal in the relationship. To get a job, it's critical to have a relationship Oftentimes, the skills that you learned at that university, they're minimal. So what do you do if you are fit, feminine, friendly, over 40 and single? And perhaps as Dr. Jen stated at one point, she felt, she felt as though she was failing. What do you do? This is the question and this is the, the dilemma of the modern black woman. Ooh, ooh, but this is for all the women out there who may be in my boat who's over 40, not married. I'm not even close to married. I'm not dating a guy seriously. And it terrifies me to think that in order to have a child, the time that it's going to take me to find a guy, you know, lock that in, you know, get married, have a kid. It, I, it makes me want to vomit, just being very honest with you, because I'm overwhelmed and I don't, I'm like, I don't even know. Am I going to be too old to have a kid? I don't know. But the bottom line is that I have to trust the process. I have to trust life. I have to trust God who I believe in, trust whomever, whatever you believe in. Now, very quickly, I want to highlight a couple of women who I mentioned in my last video. One being Ayala Van Zandt, another being April Mason. Both of these women, I believe, as far as what I've heard last is that they're single. And they both teach a lot about femininity. And as I stated in my last video, um, they don't help black women in the capacity that they used to based on unrealistic expectations and standards. However, what's interesting about both of these women is that, well, one, Ayanna Van Zandt um, admits to being masculine, it admits to being, what does she say? a man in a skirt. <laughs> and I have heard her talk in conversation with Oprah and, and, and explicitly say that she is not wife material. Now, I don't know, that was some years ago. I don't know if she has since changed her position, but I have heard Ayanna Van Zandt talk about not being wife material in her opinion because of what wives, you know, are required to do. April Mason, who, you know, again, is, she was on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. She talked a lot about femininity. I noticed that in her interview, she wasn't very vulnerable herself. She wasn't very open herself. She deflected a lot. And when asked about her and why she 
is a relationship coach with no relationship. Again, it wasn't asked that in that way, but essentially that was the question. She deflected and talked about other people. April Mason has been accused of being masculine, even though she's a femininity coach. And I think this happened when she got upset about some things that I'm not gonna go into details about, but her response was read as very masculine, very aggressive. And that is one of the ways I think that you can sort of, if you're trying to, I guess, test a woman's femininity, I think one of the ways you can do that is how does the woman respond when she is mad, when she is upset? Does she keep some level of feminine demeanor? Now, we all know that when we get upset, <laughs> you know. But, you know, I think oftentimes men expect us to be emotional when we're upset, not to be uh, aggressive. And so I'm highlighting this because these are both educated women. These are both uh, successful women that teach and, and have either taught or currently teach in some capacity other women how to be feminine. And these are both women who have and currently struggle with femininity. When it comes to this trinity, this fit feminine friendly, I would say the feminine part is probably the hardest part to work on. And it's also the part that is easiest to hide. I think, you know, being fit, whether you're fit or not can, you know, be something that's pretty visible to some extent. Um, whether you are friendly, I think that's kind of speaks for itself. But whether or not you're feminine, that is a tricky one. Because even going back to Dr. Jen, I'm not sure if she hasn't met him yet, or perhaps she has met him 10 times over. And perhaps there is something that she needs to work on within herself. Only she knows, only God knows. But I do think that the femininity piece of this Trinity that we speak about is probably the most critical and also the hardest for black women to, um, to work on. So comment below, let me know what you think. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, all the things. Make a here to make the invisible visible. Click the links in the description box. Check out my book, get to know my business and um, everything I do with coaching and consulting a little bit more. And at the end, you'll see thumbnails, clickable thumbnails. So click those. <laughs> so you can watch some of my other videos. Shout out to everyone who has supported my videos and shout out to all of my new subscribers. And as always, stay tuned for more videos.